my name is Jill Harris. I'm the voice of Suleta Mercury in Mobile Suit Gundam, the witch from Mercury. And you are listening to The Gundam Watch. All right. I'm glad to be back. Man, that looked terrible. Movie watch over at the bottom shelf, uh, Branson. Hey, hey, Dallas? Yeah. I have a question. Okay. Now, understand, I'm, I'm still new to this Gundam thing. Right, right. New types. Yes. Do they see things that aren't there? Do they see things that aren't there? I yeah. mean, yes, no. It's like a, it's like an ethereal, like they're seeing into uh, space and time and dimensional rifts. So kind okay. of. So if I were a new type, would that explain why I see a ghostly vision of John floating before me right now? I mean, maybe, but you guys, you may just miss him. I mean, it's been a while, and Ooh. well, I mean, I, I do miss him, but Ooh, but I'm a force ghost. Ooh, oh. I, I'm I'm not okay with this. This oh. this is this is creepy. Hello, I, Ebenezer. Uh, what? Wait, no. you can see him too. Are you yes. a new type too? Yes, you, but you are more new type. Man. Um, in fact, you are so new type, you can probably even sense this. <laughs> Ow! What the? You're ethereal. You're not supposed to be able to do that. I'm a force ghost, and the force is strong with me. I'm pretty sure we can't say that legally, but okay. General Roby, you're coming in. Begin transmission. Should you accept it now, here's your mission. Take your pilot seat and turn on your television. Logging into the Gundam Watch. What is the Gundam? We're gonna answer that question. From back in the classics to the newer expansion. Explore the lore with Dallas Moore and Branson. Welcome to the Gundam Watch. Moriagare, Moriagare, come and join the Gundam Watch. Machiagare, Machiagare, come and join the Gundam Watch. Brought to you by Geek Devotions comes another podcast to keep your feet in motion. Listen in close and see what's all the commotion. Logging into the Gundam Watch. Dallas and Branson bringing their fandom to you with the passion of the veteran instructing the new. We're diving deep, but the same these views and reviews. Welcome to the Gundam Watch. Hello, Gundam fans, and those who would like to become Gundam fans, welcome to the Gundam Watch, a podcast part of the Geek Devotions Podcast Network, a network of podcasts that are devoted to letting people know they're loved. So if you don't listen past this moment, know this, we love you, we care about you, there is a plan and a purpose for your life. Do not give up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are back here on Shiro Base today, and uh, we have with me, as always, Mr. Branson Boykin. Hello. How the, oh, sorry, I, I had the gauze on my cheek from that slap earlier hi everybody how's it going <laughs> he got touched by a spirit <laughs> <laughs> and that ethereal voice ladies and gentlemen is uh none other than john the how are you how you doing brother i'm just trying this force ghost thing out being as branson popped over on our side yes as, 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 and and then of course we know that dallas is uh how is it multi sentient? So <laughs> he's everywhere. <laughs> I am a fat, quiet ninja. And I will be there. Uh, so <laughs> he, he he exists across all existence. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Hey, I want to do a real quick big shout out to a, a new fan of the show who found our Discord channel. Shout out to Mo who's in our Discord channel. He found us uh, found the Gun and Watch on his podcast catcher of choice and join our discord man I'm glad to have you as part of the community if you guys want to be part of the geek devotions community go to geekdevotions.com and in the show notes down below we will have a link to our discord channel for you guys to be part of that and the facebook group for the devoted geek life uh that being said ladies and gentlemen we are in space uh to talk about something rather interesting uh branson uh, my dude uh if you could inform the crowd what we are uh, here to watch today, to discuss, to discover more in your journey to become a, a Gundam fan and John's new obsession also uh, budding up. It's uh, I'm, now, John, I want to warn you, I don't think there's going to be like high school drama in this. So uh. <laughs> what about wanton violence? Um, uh, that's a possibility. 
it's a Gundam. I guarantee you there's going to be wanton violence. <laughs> <laughs> we are watching a brand new series that just released on Netflix called Gundam Requiem for Vengeance. Mm. And uh, it says here, in the year 0079, the Principality of Zeon rebels against the Earth Federation. Sp- I read that totally wrong. We're going <laughs> to rewind that. Back it up. All right. <clears throat> In the year 0079, the Principality of Zeon rebels against the Earth Federation, sparking a war. After 11 months, the Federation seizes a Zeon base in Eastern Europe as a mixed battalion moves to reclaim it. All right. So that's what we're looking at. I'm. Uh, this is an interesting series, but uh, let's get into our expectations. Uh, we'll start with the Force Ghost here. Uh, Mr. Haru, what are your expectations about this since you're... Uh, You've broken the dimensional barrier to be with us today. Um, I, it's hard for me to have expectations because my experiences with Gundam as a franchise has been mixed, mm-hmm. so to speak. And the, the, the ones I really want to watch are tend to be the ones that haven't been dubbed. So I, I've noticed I tend to veer towards the abnormal and okay. everything I've seen going into this, which hasn't been much uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, right. Just the one preview that we saw when we were kind of touching on, which for Mercury a little bit that just had the CGI that looked really solid so it didn't set a lot of expectations for things outside of the normal but it was an interesting take on how to produce the animation so i am hopefully i am somewhere between reserved and optimistic i i am trying to think of a way to put that but i mean it's fair that's fair. Again, you, like you've not seen much more than that, just that one trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, refresh my memory. How much of the UC timeline are you familiar with? I know that you you watched uh, the. I've um, I've dabbled in OG Gundam right? seventy nine, but that's just a little bit of a dabble. Right. Not. You did F ninety one with us. Uh, well, well, we did that on on the bottom shelf. Which, by the way, right. if you guys haven't checked out the bottom shelf. We did review uh, Gundam F ninety one over Don't there. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen it, to the episode. Uh, <laughs> they had no, mixed just, reviews. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad because it was could have been so good. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Right. So okay, so you've had you you dabbled in some of the the original Gundam, right? Um, mostly probably from listening to the episodes, our our opening episodes will be dead, right? Mm-hmm. And then um, I don't. Let's see here. Wings not UC, is it? Nope. No. No, that's a completely different one. Yeah, we right. watched the the. Uh, I'm gonna mispronounce it. The Kukuru's Island. Episodes. Yeah, you did watch that, didn't you? I did watch Cuckoo's Island, yeah. uh, right. both the episode and the the remake. The remake, right? And Wish for Mercury is also not UC, correct? Wish for Mercury, correct. yeah, yeah. All right. So then, yeah, all I have is just a little bit of dabbling in the then OG okay. seventy nine. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Well, Branson, you are you are slowly growing in love with the UC. Uh, I am. Yeah. What are your expectations for this series? Uh, I, I, I'm I'm hopefully optimistic. Uh, as you pointed out, I the UC seventy nine timeline was my first exposure to Gundam at all. Uh, mm-hmm. And I guess they say you know there's nothing like your first your first love or whatever, but. Uh, so I mean I've 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 watched other series, but the ones that I enjoy the most are the ones that are most like uh, the UC seventy nine timeline. So, um, I I don't know how the difference in animation is gonna sit because you know again my first exposure was the hand drawn animation, right? Uh, but just the the idea of it this being during the the war and 
uh, the Federation and Xeon being the factions and, and the familiarity with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm optimistic. Sweet. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, as Bryson pointed out, this is a, a, a kind of a different situation altogether because it's uh, the animation isn't traditional animation. It is a uh, it is 3D and it's produced using Unreal Engine 5, which for the, you gamers out there, you know that that is a video game uh, engine. And uh, so just kind of throw this out there. Adding that idea of it, this being produced basically by, it's basically going to be a, a giant video game cutscene. How does that adjust your guys' personal thoughts on what this could be? I think it would be a real easy way to uh, cash in on a video game tie-in if they wanted to, because they've already created all the assets for them to use. So you know, That's true. I thought the same thing when I saw this. <laughs> That's I thought true. I was like, you know, they, shout out, hey Bandai, you know, we are we got Gun and Breaker. If you want to drop this, we'll do a review of that too. If you want to, uh, <laughs> well, they. Will they have an ability to make dioramas with this game? I, I don't know. I do. I wouldn't be surprised, though, Branson, with Gun and Breaker, if they drop some of the models from this uh, anime into that for you to do. Ooh. I'm game. I'm sold. Sign me up. <laughs> Where are we? Right. Right. All right. Cool beans. Well, uh, for me, I am excited about it. Um, it looks uh, fun. I like U- the UC timeline. And uh, we've said this time after time after time. For me, uh, one of the things I love the most about Gundam is that it shows the complexity of war and mm-hmm. how things aren't neat, how things are not. It's not always black and white. And um uh, not that that excuses anything that happens, but it, things aren't just aren't black and white within war. And this is coming from the place of Xeon. And I don't think either of you have yet to watch an anime where the Xeon characters aren't shown as just full on terrible individuals. Um, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, also want to point out that the people who worked on this, um, they've worked on a bunch of stuff. Uh, they have done, um, they've worked on, uh, episodes of Demon Slayer. They have done things like Final Fantasy uh, 16. They have done uh, just a plethora of things. They did a live action remake of Film Alchemist, which um, some people liked, some people did not like. Uh, so just kind of depends on who you are. Uh, and they also did a game that I'm I'm genuinely I've been intrigued about. I just haven't bit the bullet to try it yet. It's called No More Heroes Three, which is a uh, a, a JRPG, and so. They're pretty pretty solid uh, production house, but it is produced by Sunrise, and uh, of course, it, Bandai has their name all over it, working on it. So there's a lot of great things going into this, and so I'm excited just to enjoy the situation as a whole. So that being said, um, that's our expectations. Those of you who maybe you're listening to this and you're like, I'm going to watch it too. Hey, pause this podcast, whether it's on YouTube uh, or you're on your podcast catcher. Do me a favor. Uh, if you are, if you're listening to a podcast catcher, send us a message. Reach out to us on on Instagram or Facebook or drop in the Discord. Give us your expectations for the anime, and then on the back end, tell us what your thoughts were. Like we're about to tell you our thoughts. If you're on YouTube, leave comments because we love that juicy SEO. So and that helps us. <laughs> <laughs> Give us that engagement. Uh, is this engagement farming? I don't know. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> All right, guys, any other thoughts before we jump into it? Let's do this. I'm ready. All right. John, you ready to rock and roll with your Force Ghost self? Oh, yeah. I got my Force Ghost uh, PlayStation controller ready to go with this uh, (laughs) UE5. (laughs) Let's do this thing. Popcorn's done. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we just came out of uh, watching... Uh, six episodes of a, I I guess it's an anime. Uh, it's animated. Uh, but um, we're gonna break this up to two conversations: spoiler filled and spoiler free. Uh, so let's do spoiler free first. Uh, gentlemen, what were your thoughts on the show? I'm glad we're doing spoiler free first because that's that's gonna be, that that means that this episode is gonna be front front loaded gripe heavy for me <laughs> because every, everything that I can gripe about this th- this series about is going to be on the front end. Oh, wow. Um, 
first of all, where I appreciate putting your best foot forward when it comes to doing trailers for a series, mm-hmm. if you're going to show that quality of animation in your trailer, you can't have that wide of inconsistency in animation quality go- mm. going scene from scene across the series because there were there were times where it was just fantastic animation and there were other times where it was just like pbs early morning programming (laughs) and (laughs) oh it was just so frustrating because it was just like suddenly everything would just be, be like color filled just one color with no gradient and it's just like that's not the quality that you just had like two seconds ago i'm gonna give you this that that was definitely a there are there are moments where it looked spectacular like genuinely beautiful and then it was moments like we were saying we're like oh um what are we doing like (laughs) did did you drop frames or pre-rendering like i was confused at times there 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 were moments where it felt like a cutscene to a video game Mm -hmm. instead of a true pure animated feature mm-hmm. uh not all the time like you said there were some scenes that were spectacularly done um i liked the fact that it was almost completely and totally from the point of view of the humans mm-hmm. it made the mobile suits seem huge in mm-hmm. scale and whereas with the anime, the focus was the mobile suits themselves, you know, look at all these really cool fighting robots we have. Whereas with this one, it focused more on the people. So the, the, the Zaku suits, uh, everything felt huge. And the way the, the cameras would shake when the, the footfalls would happen or when explosions would happen. It, to me, it gave it a, a different angle mm-hmm. than, than what I'm used to seeing. It gave it, you the perspective of a spectator. And, yes. Instead of a participant. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh and, and I and I appreciated that. Um I I mean, I noticed the shifts in the, the animation quality from, from moment to moment. Uh it wasn't enough to pull me out of it per se. I mean, it's not something that, that is a deal breaker for me. I mean, it was noticeable. I'm not going to pretend like it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, I also too, um, with my sons getting older, I, I, uh, research video games a lot before they allow allow them to play them. Right. So I've gotten very used to watching gameplay of video games on YouTube and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So seeing a, movie with video game graphics really isn't that much of a turnoff for me because <laughs> I'm kind of used to it. Right. Like I was, I was researching some of the call of duty games before I let my son play them. And so I, I mean, I'm used to that kind of thing. Matter, matter of fact, in that first episode, I got call of duty vibes because they didn't bring the mobile suits <laughs> in until several minutes into the first fight. Right. And, uh, and I'm just like, okay, this this feels like Call of Duty, but with really fancy uniforms. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, it, it was noticeable, but it, it wasn't enough to pull me out completely. I respect that. I respect that. Cool. Uh, any other spoiled free thoughts on it? Yeah, that's my other great. And it could go into the spoilers, if depending on how you want to approach it. But really, it came down to... And uh, again, a matter of inconsistency with quality of writing. Mm. Um, there was a few moments where throughout this, where it, it felt stupid. Like <laughs> it felt stupid. What? Well, I mean, it's just like, like <laughs> no, no spoiler, but like in the beginning when you got the spacers, I'm, I, I'm just going to call them spacers for the, for my sake. Space annoyeds. Spacers choice. <laughs> Well, that D- Dallas knows where I was going with it. I was <laughs> from the outer worlds, but 
but you got you got the spacers who are on Earth for the first time in like ever, and they're like, "I thought I was catching a virus, but it turns out I have allergies." <laughs> Good golly, it's cold out here! Can't somebody turn change the temperature? <laughs> I'm like, gonna push back on that one just a little bit though, because my response to that was, if you think about it, a person who is used to living in a space colony where gravity is artificial. Uh, the air is always climate controlled things that cause allergies or whatever are automatically filtered out and they're experiencing all of that for the first time. To me, it gave it a level of grounded realism because I mean, it would make sense to someone who's used to artificial gravity. Suddenly they have real gravity to deal with. That's going to be different. Someone who's used to breathing filtered air, all of a sudden there's dust mites in their nose. And I can appreciate that to a certain degree, but the way they dealt with it was just so derpy. Like, I mean. Was it, was it derpy in the fact that it was like, okay, you guys are just poorly riding? Or was it like purposely? Like, I, like, I, cause I, I see where you're coming from, John. At the same time, I, I couldn't help but wonder, are they purposely like, like when we get, when the three of us are together and we are, la- we will say stupid things to each other. That yeah. we're just making jokes about. We all know what's happening here, and so I was trying to. I was having a hard time going. Is this dude really not sure that Earth doesn't have a thermostat that we can control? Because if we do, it's broken in Louisiana. But if we, <laughs> <laughs> but if this guy doesn't know, if he does know that that's not a thing, then um, my um, if he does know it's not a thing, it, it, was he just joking around? Like were they just like saying stupid things because they're around the campfire and they're just being stupid? It's not, that, I was legitimately, and I wonder if that, that's a problem of the tone of the English actors versus what may have been in the Japanese, because there was a Japanese track also, and if the, yeah. the jokiness of it would have come across differently in, in the Japanese language. Well, and that, that that's the other thing that it kind of goes with the whole quality of writing that goes into this, because this, it, and I, I don't want to come across as being Eurocentric or American centric in my approach to this but a lot of the dialogue for the white characters and and i'm i know i'm tap dancing on landmine (laughs) coming at this angle but it, it needs to be said but it feels like a lot of the dialogue for the white characters was written from the perspective of somebody who is some basically it seems like a Japanese person trying to write from a, the mind of an American. So it feels like a Japanese, what, how a Japanese would stereotypically view American dialogue. I, I have a serious question. Yeah. Was the writer of the show Japanese? Because they may very well have been a Japanese person writing what they thought um, an American. <laughs> I mean, that may, that may right. be the exactly the situation. But I mean, like it, it, it just it felt so characterized, and and, it, and I'm not offended by it. Let, let I, I just want to put it like that. It just didn't feel realistic to me. Like it didn't feel like real dialogue because it felt because it was such a caricature of. But you know, it just might be me being an yeah. idiot too. So. So it looks like the guy who did the writing is a cat named Gavin High Knight, um, who has done. Uh, he did Transformers, Earth Spark, Tekken Bloodline, which didn't do well. Um, he did Jinlock, which is a really great anime. That's really well recognized. He did uh the 2018 Spider-Man series. Um, so he has experience. It, it's, it's a white, it is, it is an American dude. Oh, okay. uh, so I don't know. That's it. That is oh. interesting though, that, um, and maybe it's because like, I'm looking at his, at his profile and if he listens to this, Hey, no shame. We're not, we're not, I'm not casting down on the dude, but everything he's done aside from Tekken bloodline is pretty, and, and Jin Lock is pretty kid centric. So do you think uh, maybe that's that's what it is, John? Is it because I mean, his, his it, typical it, writing is for kids? It could be, uh, you know, and it, it 
a lot of how I was watching the show, because when you go into it, first of all, the only place that I'm aware of that you can watch it is Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Netflix has it as a TV MA. So I was coming in expecting a mature script, not mature, like brown chicken, brown cow, but like, <laughs> but like mature in the sense that, you know, don't a necessarily. Thinking man's show. Yeah. You know, some, mm. So, something that that's going to be a little bit more a little bit less er, over the top stereotypism into my dialogue to <laughs> animate myself yeah but yeah. but you know i i want to make this comment and then come back to what you're what you're talking about there uh when i was watching it i noticed that we we, we, we watched it like all six episodes at once back to back and i, was, I noticed how Without fail, when the credits of an episode would run, it would catch me off guard. Like the pacing of it was so one right after the other. This happens and this happens and this happens and this happens that I didn't realize a full episode had passed by the time a full episode had went. So if you've got a storyline that has a lot of action and a lot of stuff happening quickly, boom, 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 you may not have time the, the writing may not give time for some of the stuff to marinate. And so it's more simplistic because you've got to get the point across. It is you a know? six episode series for those listening. Like it, that's, that's yeah. it. That's all we had was six episodes to get the story. Can it I, felt like a, a, a movie really. Can I yeah. interject a, a fan theory on that six episode series comment Come you on. just made? What's sure. that? I have a feeling that we've only seen half of the series so far. Oh yeah. Oh, I would be okay with that. I have a feeling that we're going to catch the other perspective of these incidences. If you catch my meaning. Yeah. Oh. I could have, in fact, I'll tell you what, let's transition to spool filled because I want yes. to explore that. <laughs> a little because, but we can't do it without doing it because it, it does raise an interesting point that I think will be fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are listening and you're like, I haven't watched it yet. Go get a free subscription to Netflix or borrow somebody else's and spoof their ID, their IP address uh, and watch it. <laughs> uh, don't do anything illegal, kids. That's wrong. But um, because we're going to we're going to spoil the mess out of this. Uh, what John is alluding to is uh, the main character uh, whose name we, is. Is there uh, a spoiler alarm that you should do before? Um, hey, spoilers. There you go. <laughs> yeah we don't have one so funny so the main character's name is iria solera and uh she is a new type and we've kind of we've, we've tap danced around this conversation over the years of uh, doing the show new types they're uh they're individuals who they've kind of evolved to a new point of humanity where they can kind of sense things there's some psychicness to it but the person piloting the Gundam, which is the uh, from the Federation side, because again, this is all taking place from the Federation point of view, is a new type, and it's a child. And um, and what John's alluding to is perhaps there will be a sequel series where the whole thing is from the Fetty side, of, maybe from the new type uh, child. You're thinking, yeah, or, that would be or the crew, the crew that was rolling with them. Oh yeah. Yeah. That would have been interesting also. Yeah. Because they... Okay, so here, here's here's my thoughts laid out. Mm -hmm. The whole entire... And this was this is my favorite part of it. That's the reason why I couldn't really dive into anything nice in the first part is because mm -hmm. to get into anything else would be a spoiler. But my favorite thing that the series does is it shows the experience of the Gundam from mm -hmm. the opposite side in an honest way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, typically the kids are like, yeah, Gundam, but they don't realize that this is the opposite perspective of what they're cheering for. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it, it shows the opposite perspective of the Gundam on, on the people who are affected the most by the Gundam one would say. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the interesting part, but it, it, it constantly had that intertwining with this lady's, this lady's story mm -hmm. mm. and then so you see the terror of it from this perspective 
and then they sh- then they show at the end inside the Fetty base. The, it's almost like a story in a story that's already in process, you know, in media mm-hmm. res, as they say. Right. Yeah. That's happening amongst this crew with one of the kids, one of the kid, what kids, the kid there. That's the new type that that we later find out is the pilot for the Gundam and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Yeah. So that it felt like there's already a developed story there to be explored as well, and this is just where they're intersecting so yeah. directly that it would make sense that there's already a different story they have planned to put out, and at mm-hmm. least from my perspective, and how sneaky snake uh the uh people over at sunrise can be with the gundam properties right and it w- I, I could see them putting out the first half of the, the first side of the story not half of the story but the first side of the story um as feelers to see if there's a audience for this type of animation because this yeah. is so weird for yeah. gundam it was it was jarring at first for Zeon to be the protagonist. For mm-hmm. me to get to a place to where I'm actually rooting for the Zaku suits instead of the Gundam. But one of the things that really helped me sell on it, going back to John, what you said earlier, the lighting on the Gundam for most of the series, it is backlit or in silhouette, and the only thing you really see clearly are its eyes. Like for, mm-hmm. for most for most of the series, it's shrouded in shadow and its eyes are glowing, giving it this almost demonic appearance. Oh, and it's horrific too. Oh yeah. yeah. Up until the very last episode, when you know the pilot is a child, and I- I- Iria, Iria, how, how do you say her name? Iria. Iria. When Iria is actively trying to reach out to him and talk with him as a mother to a son that's the first time that the Gundam is in a lighting where you see the front of the Gundam and it looks like it's lit just like everything else. It's almost like it's accenting the horror of what they, of what Zeon sees the Gundam as Mm -hmm. up until she sees who the pilot is. And then it becomes relatable. Now it's just another mobile suit. Yeah. It's another pilot in another mobile suit. Who's just as desperate to bring it into the war as anyone else. Yeah. And, uh, that was that was something that I, I picked up on, and and that helped sell the idea that no Zeon's the good guys in this story. Mm-hmm. I'm curious yeah. if what would happen if they did do a sequel series in the way that John is, is suggesting, if when they had the Zeon, uh, the the Zaku twos and all the other ones, if they would be cra- be shrouded in uh, in the shadows the way the Gun did. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they would pull that off. Maybe they, they might, but. I just thought of something else that also kind of leans towards, I think there's another series that's being cooked up Mm -hmm. or another side of the story rather. Um, Because if you remember the attack on the secondary base, that was the metal refinery Mm -hmm. uh, where they had the second suit there with the, uh, with the Gundam Mm -hmm. and they had, and they had destroyed that they had destroyed that one suit and that person was jumping out of that suit and the Gundam was, was trying to save it and mm-hmm. area was uh keeping her guy from tr- just trying to kill the pilot of that suit that was down right yeah and there was enough emotional exchange from the Gundam suit itself to tell that there tell us that there's a story between those the pilot of the one suit and the other mm mm-hmm. That's true, yeah. Yeah. That it's just like there there's a couple plot points that they left wide open that mm. it seems like they they wanted to leave open to touch on at a, at a later point. And being as yeah. it didn't happen in this series, I think there's going to be a sister series to this. I can see that. Something it's else uh when at, on the very last episode when Iria reaches out to the kid as a mother and he responds to her. He doesn't respond with a mom. You're a mom. Mm-hmm. He says mother. So that would kind of suggest that there is a story where he has a, a mother wound. I don't know. Is that such a thing? Can you have a mother wound? Yeah. Uh, so maybe John, like you said, when they do the, if they do a second series, that can be something that the kid deals with to where 
when Aria reaches out to him, he's vulnerable to that. Mm-hmm. And, and he'll stop and listen because this is a, in as much as the kid is the child that Aria was missing because her child was away, she becomes a mother that he was missing yeah. because of w- whatever happened. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Again, this is one of the reasons I, I, I say this every time. I love Gundam so much because it gets into this messiness of of the emotions of the people on play. And you have all these soldiers on both sides of the lines who they're operating in their own world and it's all being thrown together and they're all being manipulated by some sort of player uh, above them. You know, this child in that final uh, fight scene, he's talking about how the, um, you know, he's calling the Xeon terrorists and they're trying to rob it. And it's clearly that he's lost his family in some fashion Uh and they're hurting because of this. Uh, And, of course, you got the juxtaposed this entire time where Iria, she's finding because she's lost her husband. Her she wants to go home and see her son. There's this whole thing about fighting so that children don't have to fight in wars going forward. Yeah. You know, all these things take place, which by the way, uh, she fails at that mission. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. there is like this muddiness to it that it's it's a it's a tragic but beautiful story. Um, real quick, since we're talking about the um What's the word I'm looking for? The 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 Gundam. The the official designation of this Gundam is the RX seventy eight G E E X. That's the official designation of it. And the uh, the designer of it, um, his name is, uh, and I apologize to the person, uh, Kim Kimitoshi Yamane. And this cat has worked on a lot of designs, and I mean a ton of things over the years. Um, he has done, pull up the list again. Um, he did coming like obviously Requiem. He worked on the mech designs for Kukuru's Doan's Island. Uh, he worked on the designs for the Gundam ride. Uh, he worked on, um, gosh, everything. He did origins. He did Gundam seed. He did the 08 team, which was pretty cool because we have references to the 08 team in this. He also did. And I found this interesting, uh, Mobsu Gundam MS Igloo, the hidden one year war plus Apocalypse 79 plus the gravity front. And I know that means absolutely nothing to you guys, uh, <laughs> whatso- <laughs> whatsoever. But those are more of the early, um, what's we're looking for? Uh, early Gundam stories, like in the early days of the war. And, um, they, they were fascinating in the fact that um, they were kind of 3D. They were oh. done in the fashion much like this was, where you had a um, video game styled graphics, but back in the day whenever these were being produced originally. So this guy, is he's worked on 3D modeling and the 2D side of things for, for years. But so hit he, when he is the reason gunpla exists. <laughs> no, he is not. <laughs> but he is quoted as saying that whenever he was working on the design for this one specifically, he specifically was working with the aesthetic to meant to evoke images of skeletons and bones, and he was working off uh, certain phrases such as the white devil, the demon, all mm-hmm. these things. Like he wanted this particular Gundam to be terrifying. Well, it definitely succeeded. Mm-hmm. I mean, it 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 came across as a a monster, and even the gems, uh, like when they first showed the gem walk up. Mm-hmm. I mean, watching watching the anime, we know gems are just the the they're like the not the throwaway mobile suits, but like they're they're not as impressive. Right. You know, they're 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 the backup guys. Mm-hmm. But when in the episode where they first introduced him and he shows up, and then shoots a beam weapon the response of all the characters is a second beam weapon. I mean, it, it has this <laughs> menacing. And now that you said that it was supposed to be modeled after skeletons, I could totally see that. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, especially compared to the Zaku's who are these giant armored monstrosities. And then you've got the Gundam of the gems, which are, I mean, they're just rigging with armor on it and that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, it did also drive home how agile the Gundams were because when you first see those Zaku suits, I mean, they step and the ground shakes and there's, 
you know, they're these big clunkers and then you see the Gundam like doing backflips and zip zapping around, and, <laughs> you know, when you understand this, it's this hu- humongous scale, mm-hmm. but it's moving like a regular person. Whereas right. the Zaku suits are moving like gargantuan monsters, you know, when you say gargantuan monsters, that does bring to mind the fact that this series did very much make the Gundam feel like a Kaiju. Yes. Yes. Like I, I I get this, this uh, series gave me some serious uh, Cloverfield vibes. I can see that. Mm -hmm. I can definitely, I hadn't thought about that until just now, but yeah, that's an interesting uh, way of putting it. Cause it is like a lot of it is from that ground level that we talked about, like where Mm -hmm. we're looking up at these creatures at these, uh, at these machines that are just, and again, the way they played up the Gundam, I mean, he is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is absolutely terrifying. All the way to the way they showed the first use of his beam gun, mm-hmm. his beam rifle. And how oh, you that- mean when he kills the best character in the entire series and breaks <laughs> my heart? Right out the gate. <laughs> did, did your jaw drop at that scene? Because mine did. <laughs> I was so upset. I'm like, I expected him to be killed just because they made him so likable. And then, just, <laughs> but the first well, you were one, right. come on. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> he was killed. Uh, just but just the, here, way they, the way they showed that about how far the beam went and how mm-hmm. much damage it did before it dissipated. Now, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, that is very, very akin to Godzilla's nuclear fire breath weapon. You know, yeah. it does a lot of damage. And uh, yeah, I could definitely see that. Definitely. Well, any more thoughts on the story itself, though? I mean, we've, we spent a lot of time on the back end of it, and we yeah. kind of we've talked about the Gundam itself, but the story that it progressed again, we only had six episodes. I enjoyed it. And, yeah. It, it, it felt like, so F91, when we did that, you know how my big gripe was, it felt like they put all their attention in the wrong spots. Mm-hmm. I This one, it feels like if this is all we get, I'd still be satisfied with what we got. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like this, 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 this feels like they, where they took the hit with like in the consistency of animation Mm -hmm. from time to time i think that it was you could definitely tell it made up for it in this the actual story writing it not necessarily the right the line writing because uh, that would that got horrible sometimes but (laughs) (laughs) there there was uh the the actual story in and of itself is what i think really carried me on this series yeah i actually really liked iria as a character because she was tough, but she was mama bear tough Mm -hmm. in the way you would expect a mother to protect a mother bear or a mother lioness to protect her cubs. Yeah. Um, she, she did not come across as, as, as weak. She did not come across, uh, she was feminine, but was still strong. Right. Uh, but she was not, I can do anything a man can do. I mean, she was tough and she protected her own, but that maternal instinct, the way she mothered whoever she was with mm-hmm. and that maternal instinct translated to physical protection. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought that was expertly done because sometimes, especially with stuff that comes out lately, they either in an effort to not make her make a female character too masculine, they over feminize her. Mm-hmm. Or they go too far the other way and make her so tough that there's nothing feminine about her other than her pronouns. But she was that perfect mix of she's tough. I mean, you get in a fight with her, you're going to lose. But the reason you lose is because she's protecting her own. Right. And there's that maternal instinct that comes forward. And I thought that was very well done. Yeah. Uh, so she's she's one of my favorite female characters that I think I've ever seen. Because really? of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very hard for me to find a female character that I think perfectly balances being feminine and tough without veering too far one way or the other. Right. Uh, it's very, very difficult to do, but I thought they did an excellent job. 
with the writing yeah. there. Definitely. She was definitely a cool character, in my opinion. And yeah. again, she's the character you follow through the majority of it. You had other characters, and this, the, I don't know if this is a downside, but I felt like everyone else, they, they felt like side characters. Like they were important, but they felt like side characters. Um, you know, LaShawn, like I sometimes forgot he was there uh, until there. they killed him. Um, <laughs> which <laughs> felt, felt bad. Um, uh, Heaton, um, again, it was like he was there, but he wasn't there uh, until we thought he was dead uh, in the Zaku. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, right. Um, How and he like, walked out of that unscathed. Right. When so many other people died just by being at the wrong place at the wrong time, that was that was one of those. He is alive because it serves the plot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> plot armor is a is a wonderful thing. It yeah. really is. <laughs> so, but she was a she was a great character, a strong character that really stood out. I don't know how they could have played the uh, the story with a different kind of character. Honestly. Um, the way that they play. I wanted some more explanation on the freaking watch, though. Did anybody else want more explanation on that? I think they kept going to it. I think I, that I, was just one of those. That I don't was, think it needed. I don't think it was something that was supposed to have a big explanation. There's a uh, there was a YouTube video I watched about how to write uh, short stories. And one of the things they said was to have an item that shows up recurringly throughout the story. And because I've noticed some things do what? Because of inception. Like what are we doing here? No, no, no. Just, just, just something to kind of help connect the scenes together. Like uh, one of the, one of the taken movies, the guy, the one where he's being pursued by the law, the guy investigating him had a chess piece that he was always messing with in his pocket. Mm-hmm. And that chess piece did not really have anything to do with the plot. But you could always tell when he was thinking really hard and really considering stuff because he would he would hold that chess piece and rub his, run his thumb up and down the mane of the horse. Mm. It was it was a knight chess piece. Right. And so I think it was just something to – well, for one thing, it, it, she every time she got into a new suit, she hung that watch on the console. When she met the Gundam pilot and he picked it up and handed it back to her – The next time she hung it on the console, it was working. Throughout the whole series, it was busted. But when she took it from the Gundam pilot, it was working. You could hear it ticking. And Mm. she noticed it for a second. So I think it, in a way, it signified, okay, the story has now shifted. Things Mm. are different now because that watch is now ticking. That watch is Mm. working. And that was when she moved from, she was less of a soldier and more of a mother. Mm. Can I walk that back a little bit, Brent? Bam. Okay, sure. Uh, not not to say that there's your what you're saying is wrong or by any any means, but it to speak directly to something that happened in the show. It at the that watch is actually a physical representation to her connection to her family because that watch had that picture of her, like it would open up and it had a picture of her and her family in it. And yeah. there was the one part where she was unconscious, where it was dangling over the brim of her walker or uh, pram, as our British friends would refer to it, <laughs> uh, yeah. where her baby was reaching up, doing baby things w- towards it. So uh, yeah. they were uh, they were utilizing it as a, a physical representation to the connection to her family. Yeah. Um, so. But it, it, to lean into what Bam was saying, though, to take it to where he was at with the she, it, I think there was some symbolism at the end, like what you're talking about, that when the Gundam pilot gave it back to her and it was working, it was sort of like he there. It was like they're signaling that he was going to be her way of making a connection to for this war to the war to her kid basically and yeah. with how it ends so mm-hmm. i'm not i wasn't trying to kick sand on you or anything oh that. no no yeah it's just <laughs> there was those two scenes that kind of locked it together and not yeah and they weren't they weren't super overt with it as they can be from time to time yeah but, i i had actually forgotten that she had a 
picture of her family inside the mm-hmm. the cover. I, I remember that scene now that you mentioned it. Mm-hmm. But. So, but yeah. So, man, I'm just trying to. We shotgunned it for for reference for those listening to us, and honestly, there was just so much that happened. And Branson alluded to this earlier. We 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 lost track of time watching this. Yeah, like and not in a bad way. The right. the storytelling itself was done in such a way there wasn't that fatigue of going. Oh my gosh, I'm still watching this. Like like I, it moved so well following uh, her and seeing the different aspects of it. And every episode ended with you going, <gasps> and then it continued on naturally through the next episode. It was a great watch through as far yeah. as the storytelling all the way through in my opinion yeah. john was that like that for you when you were watching it on your own yeah um you know just true the real logistics of the show story aside um i watched this the first day that it dropped um mm-hmm. all in one sitting and at dallas and bam were like yeah we're not watching it yet but we'll get back <laughs> to you um but it, yeah, that, that was what carried me through it. I didn't intend on watching the whole thing in one go. It just ended up being that way because of the way that they maintained your interest from at the end of the episode. It's sort of like what Elvis used to say, leave them wanting more. I, th- right. I, I feel like that they that was something that they did with intention on this series specifically. Right. <clears throat> because you know how we always talk about the filler episodes that Gundam series tend to have where it's just yeah. downtime for the sake of downtime. Right. This didn't have any of that. This right. was this was this cut out all the filler, so it was just constant tension. Uh, mm. w- with a little bit of levity here and there to ease the fatigue but yeah it, it was a constant you felt as involved with the story as the other characters basically yeah, yeah. definitely definitely I, I would almost argue that it's preferable to watch this back to back you know oh yeah uh because i I'd, i i think i would have been irritated if like if I if they had released this a little bit along, mm-hmm. like one a week, I would have been irritated to get to the end of the episode and been like, I have to wait a whole week for the next installment. Are you serious? <laughs> you Legit- know? Legitimately, my hope is that if they release this on on Blu-ray, which Bandai released this on Blu-ray, I know Netflix has their grubby hands on it, but help me out. <laughs> I hope that there's an option to watch this without the cut without uh, cutting to credits. Yeah, and I can hit play and it just goes straight just plays the through. whole thing. Yeah. Well, when we were doing setup to record this episode, I had said specifically that this felt like a two hour movie that was cut into six parts and mm-hmm. just had credits attached to both sides of the cuts because it transitioned very much almost real time from event to event. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So well, we've talked about the story. We talked a little bit about uh, the character development, but also we talked very little bit about the actual suit, the mechas, the mechs. So let's let's do that for just a little bit. Talk about a couple of them. We talked quite a bit about the uh, the Gundam EX uh, that was terrifying. Uh, I'm on the official Gundam info page, and there's the way they describe it says it's the state of art mobile suit developed by Federation forces. The machine was designed with an emphasis on ground maneuverability and operating time, allowing it to go deep into enemy territory to perform reconnaissance in uh, force and behind the lines uh, disruption. Because all documentation of its development is destroyed in the post war chaos. It's full details are lost to history, i.e. Bandai didn't want to write more information on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, there is nothing reconnaissance about that suit. That thing was designed to be a scalpel. It moves in, it kills, it comes back out. I, it, it, for them to call that a recon vessel or a recon, <laughs> dude, uh-uh. Well, it, how stealthy it was, though. I mean, that sucker got, like you said, it got in and got out quickly. And it's yeah. like the only reason that they knew it was there was because Homegirl was having her her uh, new, new type, type flashes, spider sense or whatever. <laughs> so, um, but let's let's jump over. We, we've seen the Zaku's before, and we're we're all familiar with the Zaku twos. Uh, this is Zaku two F type is what they were all f- f- uh, piloting on the front end. It's a typical Xeon suit. 
Um, Irias, though, specifically had an extra antenna, which gave it that, uh, you know, the the wolf look. Uh-huh. And I didn't recognize this until I saw the character models later. It actually has uh, claw marks, like 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 their paws, mm-hmm. on the feet. Oh, cool! Uh, to add to that wolf motif, um, and then everyone else has again. They're all F types, but Iria and um, Home Dude, they get a a makeshift Zakutu, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that has no uh, type, and it's called a, it's a Zakutu assembled for Solaria. Um, its parts are borrowed from various uh, a variety of machines. Uh, thanks to Alfie's efforts, its performance is the same as a normal machine. For protection, though, the beam weapon uh, from beam weapons, it has a shield with uh, with double layers of armor and caterpillar tracks attached to its exterior. What did you guys think about this junkyard, Zaku? I dug it. I was yeah. into yeah. it. Yeah, it gave me very strong um, BattleTech vibes. Mm-hmm. Uh, BattleTech is a book series slash board game that's been around since the eighties. And, uh, a lot of the stories it's, it's junky space. It's not shiny space, you know? Uh, and a lot of the battle mechs are sometimes it's spare parts that people can get their hands on to stitch things back together because in the lore of that story, exactly how the battle mechs are produced, depending on what part of the story you're in, they've been lost to history. So they're just retrofitting, battle mechs that they find to make them work. So it kind of had that vibe to it. And I, I actually really enjoyed it. I love the, the scrappy scroungy. Let's just throw together what we can find and make something. And the fact that they were able to throw something together and it lasts as long as it did against the Gundam Mm -hmm. in in that fight. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed like using the, the Caterpillar tracks as armor. I thought was neat. I thought it was cool that what made the Gundam retreat was it, they were nowhere near beating the Gundam, but they (laughs) did enough damage to the gym that the pilot was in danger. And -hmm. that's what made the Gundam retreat. Uh, You know, so it, that I, I I loved that. Uh, Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of Star Trek. I enjoy Star Trek, but Star Trek is, is shiny space. Everything's pristine. <laughs> everything's crisp. Everything's right where it should be, and that's fun. But I really like the the, the junky space. You know, the, the you guy like Firefly space. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I that's felt a, a great little way bit that John. Uh, a little bit of Firefly in there. You know, where the the engine starts sputtering, so you kick it, and all of a sudden it starts working again, and you just keep going with it. You know. Ironically, he doesn't like shiny space, but he <laughs> likes to relate it to the series that literally just says shiny every time something's nice. <laughs> <laughs> good point good point so so john you were saying you liked it what what about the this uh this junkyard uh zaku did you like um honestly just the whole uh diy ingenuity aspect of gundam mm-hmm. building like it kind of supposes the idea of you know, 1950s hot rod culture at home set in the future. So (laughs) see John Travolta dancing around a makeshift Gundam. Good, 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 good. Gundam lightning. You're going up the corner. (laughs) Go goof lightning. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. That's a good one. That's a good one. So it, 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 it plays with the imagination a little bit, but I also like the whole concept of bringing, bringing mobile suit fighting to guerrilla warfare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm kind of, I'm the same camp as you guys. Like there was a texture to the entirety of the series and the, I like the ground war stuff. Um, and uh, myself, like one of my favorite series is, uh, MS 08 team, which uh, hopefully we can get to review one day. Uh, but because um, it is that ground war, they're in a jungle type of thing. And this has that same feel. And they bring that to the mechs in this more so than anything else. And the whole piecing it together, the fact that they were uh, coming together to make this happen. Again, the series leaves you feeling weird because traditionally Zeon is the quote unquote bad guys. 
but you're like you're kind of rooting for these cats to survive because that's all they're trying to do. They're just trying to survive and get out of here. Mm-hmm. And to see them, the ingenuity. Like I love the idea that like okay, all right, we got to deal something with these with these beam savers. Let's add some extra layers of protection. Let's add this uh, the treading from these to put everything together. I, I that was pretty cool to me. The entirety of the aspect of it. Um, and just for those of you guys who want to know, there are gunplay you can get from this. And they're only about fourteen bucks American in in, in uh, American money. Oh uh, really? Yeah, but it's only it's the it's the Gundam EX, uh, and then unfortunately they only have the Zaku Two F type. They don't have the Junkyard type. Uh, oh. So, uh, but if you're feeling, I don't know, uh, adventurous, I suppose you could try to kit bash it and make your own, uh, much like they did in the series. So that's a thing that could take place. Um, that but yeah. would actually work. That's yeah. If you got like a model tank and took the tire tread off and got yeah. some super glue, you, you could actually do that. Mm-hmm. Now, the real question is when is this going to be available in GB4? <laughs> well i mean if it's just a t- if it's just a zaku 2 um f type i think we have those in g before no i'm talking about the junkyard version well yeah that's that's the thing <laughs> uh side note branson you can get the tread off of the gun tank uh high grade gun tank um and try doing that oh okay which is probably um, what they really did in the show well th- in the show they use the zaku gun tanks Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, and so you grab the tread from that. It's uh eighteen dollars for a high grade uh, gun tank off of Amazon if you want to. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I see Branson's brain just diving into <laughs> debt, thinking about all the gunplay they can do. Uh, <laughs> so this, while you guys were ta- doing all your shilling for gunplay there, um, <laughs> weirdly enough, it, it made me think of something that would be interesting that you'll never see happen, but I would pay all the monies for it. Um, applying like you, you, y'all remember back in the early two thousands when they were crossing literary books with zombie fiction. Uh huh. Yeah. Or, yeah. or like a uh, pride, uh, pride, pride prejudice prejudice and zombies. zombies and yeah. Dawn of the dreadfuls and, that's where we got Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter from stuff like yeah. that. Classic mm-hmm. cinema right there. Right. Can you, can you picture if they started redoing uh, revised history with uh, adding Gundam to oh, it like that? Cool. Like wow. I, I, I was thinking about it like this, this totally could, could have been like the life of Che Guevara. <laughs> Set to gun, set set to Gundam. Mm-hmm. That would definitely be interesting to say the least. So, I, I'm, I, I'm easy, watching. I'm, I'm watching easily smoke seeing, come out come out of Bam's ears now. I, I am too easily seeing Zaku suits with Nazi swastikas emblazoned on them, Bruh, and, you could, you and could, the Gundam running with an American flag waving behind it. The Revolutionary <laughs> War, my dude. The red oh, versus dude. the blue. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm telling you, Bandai yeah. Namco, y- <laughs> y'all do, if y'all go like schoolyard, schoolhouse rock with this, you know, start making, <laughs> start putting that out. You know, there's, there's edutainment market out there that you can hit. I will put this out there. There is an official chronological order or timeline of, uh, for the UC Gundam and prior to UC 01 is our timeline adjusted. Ah. And so um, it goes all the way back to 1969 with the moon landing and stuff like that. Then like in 19, the year 1990 uh, conflicts begin to erupt across the place, across, across the globe. Um, 93, there's a brief nuclear uh, exchange in Europe causing the United Nations to dissolve um in 99 surviving nations of the world established the first earth federation uh to deal with the global crisis the human space colonization pro- uh, program is announced and earth federation divides the globe into 11 distinctive uh portions 
In the year 2005, the first solar-powered satellite takes place. In 2009, our Federation forces, the EFF, who we see in the series, is founded as a the military arm of the International Community of Earth. And then it goes up from there. Like apparently next year, in the year 2025, the Jupiter Energy Fleet is launched from lunar orbit. And then in 2045, construction of the first space colony begins. And then after that, Ooh. we go into the UC era. So we're just 20 years from living in space, apparently. Space. Who's going? I'm down for it. <laughs> I might visit. I don't know that I want to live up there. I now have... I'm going to break your brain here, Br- Branson. Okay. But you already do live out here. <laughs> okay. You, okay. You literally are attached to a, lo- a rock flying yes. through space at thousands of miles of an hour. Yes. If I can take I it know. a next step further, Branson, technically, you're living inside of a Mac yourself. That's actually a very Gnostic view of things. <laughs> <laughs> if your consciousness is yourself, your body is a mech. Yeah, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> um, C.S. Lewis had something to say about that in uh, <laughs> a Prilgum's Regress, but oh my this gosh. isn't the uh, show for that. <laughs> oh my gosh guys all right well any more thoughts on the show it's really good and everybody should watch it top shelf <laughs> I, I concur i concur i'm gonna be in the same camp i enjoyed it so let's let's end this portion with the question we ask if this is the first time you ever saw anything gundam would you continue watching it is this a good standalone series i think that's a valid question because there are things in here that aren't explained. Uh, example, when Commander uh, Yuri uh, Kellerin shows up, or General, rather. I'm assuming that I knew Branson didn't know who he was. John, you probably didn't know who he was either. Nope. Uh, but he is a character from Gundam uh, 08 MS Team, um, uh, which is, again, another a great anime series. And then at the ending, where she's in Africa, that's in reference to Gundam 0083. Uh Stardust Memories, which again is a, another series. So there is this overarching Gundam world that exists in. So if this is the first time you watch something Gundam, could you rock with it and would you be willing to watch more? I can say from my perspective, yes. And I already do want more because I want that second half of this, <laughs> <laughs> of the, the second side of the story to go with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would agree too. I think if this were my first exposure to Gundam, I would actually maybe have an easier time mm. because rooting for Zeon and thinking of the Gundam as the bad guy's mobile suit wouldn't be there because it would mm-hmm. be my first exposure to the story at all. But the story in and of itself, I, I thought they did a really good job of giving you enough information that you could kind of fill in the holes yourself uh, without knowing a lot of the Gundam back lore. Mm-hmm. The only thing that was really confusing to me is why uh, the guy from 08, why he was supposedly this superior officer, but got to dress like a fashion model from the catwalk or something. Because you know, the hires of Xeon got to do whatever the crap they wanted to. Well, yeah. And, and ultimately I kind of figured that out. I didn't, I didn't need him to be wearing a formal uniform to just, just seeing how everyone acted when he showed up. Dude, that was really the only thing that I would be lost on if I didn't have you there to tell me, oh, this is a callback to another series. Dallas. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Tell me Pert Plus for Men didn't look like Homeboy from Witch from Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kind of did. You know what I'm he talking about? Did. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. Well, guys, you've heard it here. Uh, we all enjoy it. We all recommend it. If and if it's like, if you're like, hey, I, where where's a good place to watch Gundam? You know, this is a good one to jump into. And honestly, Branson, you kind of make me wonder. I wonder if we can find somebody who's seen nothing but has seen nothing of Gundam, have them watch this first, and then see their reaction to seeing Gun the Gundam as a good guy. I'm curious hmm. what that would be like. That might be difficult because the Gundam is so iconic. Yeah. I don't know. So, Interesting thoughts. But yeah. ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for us to make a little transition to our maintenance reports. 
crew's maintenance reports now loading in three, two, one. All right, guys, welcome to the maintenance report. This is the part of the show where we take aspects from the shows that we watched and find a spiritual connection or spiritual significance to it. Uh, does anyone have a maintenance report for us today? I do. Go for it. Okay. The The entirety of the series, uh, there is this conversation about the next generation taking place. Uh, you see it. Uh, where uh, Alfie's talking to the one general, and he's like, "Look, we've got to get to space because we got to make it so that the 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 next are the younger ones can make it back. They can make it home." And uh, again, Homegirl's whole thing is at the end. She's like, "I'm fighting for the next generation, so they don't have to be these child soldiers, so that they don't have to fight wars anymore." And there's this concern about the next generation that keeps coming up, and that is kind of my main report. It's been something that's been on my mind for for quite a while with various other things that is just that we have to do things intentionally to care for our next generation to help them out there's a a passage psalm 145 verse 4 it says one generation shall commend your works uh, to another and shall declare your mighty acts and this is talking about um the need for us who are mature to make sure we're instructing the next generation in the right ways to do things the right way to see the world and help them to not just know the information, but to, to for it to be part of their being, be part of who they are. Not because we told them to, but because it's become a conviction of theirs to walk this out. And um, because we have a generation that is falling to the wayside because of various reasons. Um, and um, we have got to be intentional. We talked about this on, on Geek Devotions recently even uh, about breaking certain generational patterns and curses that we have over our lives so that we create a floor for the next generation that's higher than our ceiling mm. uh, because that's the only way we can grow as individuals as a as a people and truly get to the point that god really needs us to be so that's my maintenance report very very cool john do you have anything i do actually all right. um, although I didn't look up where my scripture reference is coming from. Uh, I do know that Jesus said it though, when he said, you have heard it said to uh, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you to love your enemy. Um, and that's a, a perspective I think that is subtly cr- presented throughout the series in that the entire time that you see the Gundam, on the display in the show is from a perspective of fear and hate uh, because the first thing the Gundam did on the show was kill the best character on the show. And I hated him for it, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and, and so you just start to, to understand this perspective of hate your enemy, hate your enemy. This is my enemy. And then you for suddenly you have that enemy humanized at some point in the show and you're able to see past just the suit. Cause up until that mm. point, it was just the suit. Right. Um, but the moment that you humanized your enemy, you, it was hard to bring yourself to that place where you're like, I want to see you die. I want to, mm. I need justice. It was, we're all stuck in this horrible situation doing right. what we, you know, and you know it was at that point in the in the show where aria stopped hating her enemy and started seeing that and it's just like at the end of the day we have to remember like if i were to say okay who's your enemy and then suddenly someone's face flashed in your head before your holy thoughts tried to push that image away and tell yourself a lie that you don't hate Mm. anybody or whatever But I mean, that if you hold that face to your mind, you got to keep in mind they were created in the image of God, you know. That's good because uh, man was created in the image of God, and so how can the Bible says, How can we, not having seen God, proclaim to see to love God and yet hate our neighbors? Yeah, and so whom we have seen. So it just comes down to, you know, it's easy to get caught up in situations and dehumanize the people that we interact with or dehumanize 
whatever. But at the end of the day, that person was created in God's image just as much as you. And Jesus right. died for them just as much as you. So they have as much worth as you do, regardless of how you may feel about what they represent, what party they they vote for, you know, what whatever whatever what ideologies that they don't you don't necessarily agree with or believe right they still there's still a dignity and a respect due to them just based off the fact that they are created in the image of god so yeah definitely amen well um i had a maintenance report but john literally stole it <laughs> oh shoot, bro! I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. That that's that's awesome. That just means that we were both catching that same message there. That was the exact point I was going to make. I had a, I had a different scripture verse. I had uh, Romans twelve verses nineteen through twenty one. Mm. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, "Vengeance is mine; I will repay," says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. But I was going to say exactly what you said, the importance of letting God handle who gets their just desserts. And we respond with the respect and dignity that comes from seeing someone as made in the image of God. Mm. And uh, something that uh, I was talking with my mom about this whole concept, and she brought up a really good point. She said that, uh, and I feel like I've mentioned this on another show before, but I'll, I'll say it here. Sometimes when, when God says vengeance is mine and when he gives people what they deserve, sometimes what that means is they turn to Jesus mm. and their sins are paid for on the cross, just like ours. Yeah. And that person that wronged you, that person that did something terrible and heinous to you, that sin that they committed is just as much paid for by the blood of Jesus as our own sins. Word. And so that that is something that we have to keep in mind. So I'm just going to piggyback on what John said and say, ditto. <laughs> I like it. I, I, I'm a big believer that Ted Bundy's in heaven. So, Amen. There you Amen. go. All right, guys. Well, those are our maintenance reports. We want to hear from you. Uh, how this encouraged you? Have they challenged you? Uh, do you have a maintenance report? Reach out to us. Again, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram and the Twitters. Just look for the Gundam Watch. Let us know if you're on threads. We might open up a threads account. Also, check out the Discord channel that we have. And for more information about Geek Devotions Podcast Network and everything else, Geek Devotions, go to geekdevotions.com. Uh, don't forget to also check out a small little project that Branson has called the spider fan podcast Branson, what is that spider fan podcast is a podcast where i look at classic spider-man comics and uh talk about how much i love them and then find a spiritual significance in them much like we do here on the gundam watch and depending on how things go i haven't heard the episode yet but there might be a special rebuttal episode covering a certain 70s spider-man on screen project. I don't know. I've got to hear the episode first before I decide whether or not I'm going to make the episode. We'll see. Time will tell. Uh, that, uh, ooh, this uh, Force Ghost thing. Gotta go. Bye. <laughs> before the Force Ghost space, uh, phases out, ladies and gentlemen, uh, check out the bottom shelf. Uh, John, what is the bottom shelf? Uh, it's a podcast uh, where we watch movies that are critically established as being terrible to determine whether or not they are so well nomenclatured mm. movies such as mm, spider-man 1977 oh yes that heap of crap <laughs> <laughs> so next episode of spider fan will be <laughs> 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 oh my goodness gracious I, I uh, like like george washington i cannot tell a lie i that <laughs> you know i'm not, i mean i'm gonna keep it tall that movie was trash bro hear more <laughs> on the on upcoming episodes of the bottom shelf uh john any other projects you want to promote since you're you're guessing up here in force goes form no nah, that's good we'll go with All the right. bottom shelf 
Cool beans. Hey, before we sign off, I want to say thank you to you two gentlemen for doing this uh, project with me, the Gundam Watch. Uh, I, I realized that I, I kind of hijacked both of you guys into this at some point. Uh, and uh, I appreciate being able to hang out with both of you, laugh at stuff, talk about things. We can, you know, throw some elbows about people's stuff, uh, <laughs> Spider-Man and other things. And uh, we know that it's all good encouragement. And if you guys have been encouraged about by any of this stuff, again, let us know. We love to hear from you guys. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay devoted. Peace and love. <laughs> <laughs>